Hello, Harris County. Common Threads is with us again this month as part of HCPL Centennial Celebration. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we present this live cooking workshop with Common Threads. Common Threads is a national nonprofit that provides children and families cooking and nutrition education to encourage healthy habits that contribute to wellness. Common Threads aspires to build communities that embrace healthy cooking, healthy eating, and celebration of culture. All of the recipe links from tonight will be posted, as well as a quick survey that really helps Common Threads to understand the community and to serve you better, so I really encourage you to fill this out. The 1970s is the decade of fusion cuisine, the battle between a new movement of health consciousness and convenience that became so popular post-World War II, as well as the revival of the French cuisine due in part to the 10-season cooking show by Julia Child. It's important to name Chef Alice Waters, who, have, who opened Chef Panis 50 years ago in Berkeley, California, and started the so-needed trend of sourcing local organic products that were ripe and in season, and serving one set menu that changed daily. Quite impressive. Tonight, we're gonna dive into two wonderful dishes, zoodles marinara and spiced chicken kebabs. I also wanna encourage you throughout the presentation to post your questions in the comments section as you think of them. Chef Nebraska will answer your questions throughout the program as she is able and then again after the demonstration, if time allows. So without further ado, please welcome Chef Nebraska with Common Threads for a journey back to the 1970s as we explore US food trends and what families were eating. Hi, Chef Nebraska. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. Awesome. Me. So are you all ready? Yeah, ready to disco dance with you guys tonight. We're okay, so ready. The Go ahead and take it away, okay? Thank you so much. And we are celebrating the 70s. We've been already, what, like four or five months going through the decades. And this one is one of my favorites because, well, I was born in 1971, so I'll be 50 this September. So don't tell anyone, my goodness. So we are gonna cook some awesome dishes today. We're gonna make some skewers using those fabulous uh, pineapples that were so common during that decade. And we're gonna make some spin on the bolognese sauce or pasta by using sudos and making it marinara. So a little bit healthier and, and lighter, but full of flavor. So I really encourage you guys to uh, write me a message so we can keep this interactive and fun. But without further ado, let's get cooking. That's what we came here today to do. So let's start by marinating the chicken because we want that chicken to get all the juices and all that flavor. And for me, that's probably one of the most important things when, when we cook. We're gonna uh, preheat that oven at 425. And why it is so important? Well, because it will sear the meats, it will caramelize those vegetables that are in the skewers, and it will make that, that chicken juicy. If we don't preheat the oven, if we don't have uh, high heat, then we're gonna boil and we're gonna make a mushy mess and we don't want that. So we're gonna talk about not only the 1970s today, but we're also gonna talk about shopping. You know, what do we do when we go to the grocery store and how do we uh, work through that grocery store and through the aisles and how do we get all the good stuff that we need and how we don't get caught into the marketing and buy things that we don't need and we can get much more for our money. So let's work first with our chicken. Like I said, always sanitation, very important. And I want uh, you guys to film my uh, cutting board. Let's see if we can get a, a good look at the cutting board. Remember, we use a different cutting board for uh, for meats and a different cutting board for vegetables or things that are uh, ready to eat. Why? Because we don't want to contaminate. I have here already some of the chicken pre-cut, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do the rest of it. Um, remember, the smaller the pieces, the faster it will cook. And also, the easier the marinade is gonna go inside. So instead of making dices, I'm gonna go and make strips. Why? Because I want 
the spices to enter or to cover smother as much of that protein, as much of this chicken. Remember, if you don't eat uh, chicken, we can always use uh, tofu. If you eat uh, maybe seafood, we can substitute this for any fish. And remember, our bear claw, always, we use our knuckles to stop the knife from cutting our fingertips. So there you go. Guys, I've been missing you. Last time I saw you, we did our program on uh, Asian Pacific and we made some yummy curries. But I was in Las Vegas then and it was kind of difficult to work on a kitchen that was not mine. So I'm happy to be back in my kitchen. Any questions there? Hmm? I need you guys to communicate, you know. Another thing is this, uh, um, I want you guys to, if it's possible, to post the recipe for the chicken kebabs. Yes, spiced chicken kebabs. And we're going to use cumin and we're going to use uh, some uh, red pepper flakes and black pepper, salt, garlic. But remember, we can always, always change um, make variations. These are only ideas. You know what? It will be really good with the pineapple too and the bell peppers and all of this. I think like an Asian marination, maybe uh, some ginger, garlic, uh, the same uh, red chili flakes, but a little bit maybe of a little bit of uh, low sodium soy sauce. And maybe instead of lemon juice, I will put some rice vinegar and that will give us a different flavor profile to the same dish. It will be fabulous. And for the noodles, instead of making it marinara, well, you can use also the same marination for the noodles and you will get a fabulous result too. And you can add maybe some peanuts or something to, to kind of make it fusion Asian. So remember, the sky is the limit. When we cook, just let, let your heart, your senses kind of guide you through it. I don't know why, but I feel like dancing today. I wish we had some of that disco music here to do my thing here. But for now, it's going to be only cooking. So we have here the chicken. I'm going to remove my cutting board and I'm going to give it a little wash. Remember, sanitation always. We're going to wash it, the knife with soap to kill any bacteria or the growth of any pathogens. So it's very important when we work with temperature control uh, items that we keep them at the right temperature, but we also, that we keep uh, everything the surrounded clean. I still, I know that I didn't drip anything in my base cutting board, but still I'm gonna clean that and sanitize it. Cause well, that's how it's supposed to be done. And I'm gonna get a new cutting board for my marination. I'm gonna use some garlic. We're gonna use some lemon juice. So I'm gonna put about two to three cloves of garlic. Some lemon juice, look at these lemons. There's almost like an orange, so beautiful. And We're gonna use the marination. Will be a good idea if we make them in a separate container, so we can use half for the chicken and the other half for uh, for the vegetables that we're gonna also cook. So I'm gonna squeeze the lemon, and this lemon almost looks like an orange. It's so. 
colorful, so pretty. Haven't seen a lemon so dark in color, I guess. I hope it tastes like a lemon and not like an orange. <laughs> Smells good. Smells like a lemon. And we're gonna crush the garlic. Look what I'm doing. Little whack. Little whack. Again. And you know, we are in the 1970s. In the 1970s, uh, there, are, there are a lot of things that happen in that decade. I love that decade. Not only because it's my birthday but it's also because uh, you know Walt Disney opened its doors in Orlando Florida in 1971 and in that decade well the war in Vietnam ended thankfully and um, it was very tumultuous because also in that decade we had one president resigning and we had three presidents during that decade. We had Nixon and Ford and uh, Jimmy Carter. So a lot of things happened in the 1970s. Population in the US reached 200 million only 50 years after, I mean, in uh, 1920, it was only 100 million. So it doubled up in 50 years. Pretty amazing. Well, in terms of food, what it really caught my attention is all the damage that was that has been done pretty much after World War II with the invention of all the processed foods and, and boxes and quick things. The 1970s is when all this movement for healthier uh, going back to the roots started and we had, like it was said at the beginning of the introduction, uh, Chef Ali, Ali's uh, Waters opening Chef Panis in um, Berkeley, California. Coming back from Europe, she was the person who really pushed the movement for local sourcing, organic products, eating things that are in season, which we probably, we all should think about. We have, okay, one, about a tablespoon of cumin. We have our uh, lemon juice that looks like, a, like an orange. I don't know why. We'll see how it tastes like, hopefully not sweet. Um, black pepper, about a tablespoon. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, not too much, because you know, we can always add, but we can never take away. And it's very important when we work with salt that we don't, we don't abuse that. We can always add. We're going to add some, a little bit of chili flakes. Well, why? Because, because I like them. And I, the recipe calls for one tablespoon. So let's do that because I like it spicy. And it's yummy that way. So one tablespoon. And let's mix all of that. We're going to uh, preheat the oven. So I'm going to go to my oven and get it started. If you have a convection oven at home, you know that this is not going to take much time because it's really fast. There you go. And I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. The recipe called for two tablespoons, so we can measure them, we can eyeball it, you know. By now, I think I I have a pretty good idea of what one tablespoon means, but if you don't remember that, you know, basically your thumbprint, that is eyeballing uh, one tablespoon of either peanut butter or oil. Look how delicious. Can you guys see it there? I think so. Okay, so we're gonna drizzle some of that goodness in the chicken. 
I'm going to get a different spoon because we're not going to contaminate anything. And, you know, if you want it a little bit to get a little bit of a red color, we can always add a little bit of paprika. That would be also great. Uh, you like other flavors, more like an Italian flavor, you can add oregano. Um, if you like more like a Middle Eastern taste, well, we we can add a little bit of allspice and maybe cardamom powder or uh, sumac. So, like I said, the sky is the limit. Let me put this in the refrigerator, cover it, so it gets some time for all those juices to work in magic and give all that flavor, tenderize the meat and the chicken, you know, the acidic element will always help uh, tenderize meats. It basically the, changes the, the chain and uh, proteins. So I'm gonna wash my hands really well. Again, good sanitation as we work. And I'm gonna now start with those things that we're gonna add to our kebabs. We're gonna add some bell peppers. And you can use only green, but you know, I like colors. So I'm gonna use green and red. I think they are very pretty. And like we said here in Common Threads. And also the, uh, the suggestion from my plate from the U.S. government, it says that we should eat or serve our plate like a rainbow. And I do have here this thing. And I think I have shown it before, but why did I put it behind me today? Because even when we go to the grocery store and we shop, it should resemble that plate somehow. All of these vegetables have been washed and clean, okay? <laughs> so you know. So what? It doesn't take much time here from the cooking and the talking with you guys. So less is more and what my, okay. Milma is always says, yeah, that's true. Well, we're getting back to the basics here. Somebody mentioned getting back to gardening, which is great because we can get our own produce. Actually, today we're going to use all the basil and the herbs from my garden. Thank God they came back after the freeze. <laughs> we lost those too. I lost all my citrus this year. That didn't make me very happy. But what to do? So... We have here again, we cut the bell pepper in half to stabilize it. We go bare claw and then we make a couple of cuts. I do three so we can get nice big pieces in the kebab. So you can see them. If they're too small, then they will get, they will uh, come out, out of the skewers. And we don't want that. We want them to, to be shown. So we have here two. I'm going to put them on the pot here, waiting. And I do like onions. I don't know about you guys, but we can also add a few pieces of onion. The more the merrier and the more the better in terms of vegetables. That's the only one that is, you know, that I will say is good to have some extra. So... I'm going to cut just a few pieces of onion. We're not going to add much because remember, we're going to add these beautiful uh, pieces of pineapple. So I'm going to cut just a few pieces of onion and probably I'm going to get them out of the big parts because the hearts, we're not going to be able to get much out of it. But here, yeah, we can get one maybe two pieces here on one side then maybe take some thank god this haven't made me cry yet i don't want to cry here with you guys it's time to be happy 
Yeah. Somebody says it is fun. Yeah, Ash said it's fun to cook. Of course it is fun to cook. It's a labor of love. So we have here, you know, and I like all these colors. We want purple and we want red and we want green. We want as much or as many as we can add. I think we need probably a little bit more of this. Let's take the seeds. Even if you have one seed here and there, they're not going to harm you, by the way. Remember, we eat those seeds when we eat jalapenos, so it's fine. Capsicums, which that's how they're called also, or bell peppers, they have a lot of nutrients and antioxidants. And the funny thing is that each color lends a different nutrient. So the same vegetable at different stages of uh, ripeness will give you something different. So what are we going to do now? We're going to marinate those, including the pineapple, with the leftover uh, seasoning so, or dressing that I made earlier. If we feel that we need a little bit more, we can always squeeze a little bit more lime juice or lemon juice. But I think we're okay. So I'm going to put here back in the bowl and yes use your hands your hands are these beautiful god-given thongs or utensils and as long as you keep them clean they're absolutely fine so going back to the grocery store because we were talking about the shopping and it's important that we, when we go in, I don't know if you have noticed that you go inside the grocery store and the first thing that you see is the bakery for some reason. And I think it's a, a, a very uh, good for the grocery store, maybe bad for us marketing too, because if we go there hungry, which we shouldn't do when we go to the grocery store, we tend to grab something there. But walking on the perimeters of the grocery store is the way to go because that's where fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, eggs, all those good things that we need are. And our, like I said, our shopping cart should look at least 50% uh, fruits and vegetables, just like my plate, like the poster that I just showed you. Look, this is done. Is marinated. We're gonna put it on the side so we can start working on our pseudos. We need to kind of time everything together because I'm gonna play this together. I'm gonna put the pseudos uh, as the base of the dish and then some skewers on top. So I'm gonna move this again to make sure that everything gets coated with the dressing. And, and if we need a little bit more later, well, we can drizzle a little bit more lemon juice and, or olive oil or whatever we want. I'm going to maybe add a little bit more lemon juice because I like the citrusy of it. And let's work on our pseudos. For the pseudos, we're going to start first by making the sauce. Can we please uh, put the recipe? I have here still a little bit of that onion left. So I'm going to chop some of that. We're going to need also um, garlic. So can someone sometimes ask about organic and what to buy? Oh, if it is worth it. I mean, the nutritional value is the same whether you buy organic or or regular the difference is probably the way it is uh it is definitely harvest and 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 how the soil is treated if it is uh organic products go to a rigorous process of certification where the soil and the feed and everything that is given to the plants and meats as well 
uh, doesn't contain hormones or pesticides. Uh, it's also, in most cases, done in a in a more sustainable way. But you know, if push comes to shove, and you know, we all know that organic tend to be more expensive. I am grateful now that more and more stores are coming out with their own organic brands and it has become more mainstream and affordable. But if uh, it's not available or you can not do it, you know, it's better to eat vegetables, even if they're uh, the normal ones, then uh, not eat them at all. So we're shopping the onion now. Remember, we always keep the root. And why? because it helps us keep all those layers of the onion intact and it makes it a lot easier to dice it. So we're gonna go and use the lines in the onion to make slits. So we go one and two and three and four and we go and so on. We want to make sure that we don't have to go again and cut so many times afterwards. When we do this little preliminary job, then the onion gets chopped and dies beautifully. Um, there are some organic fruits and vegetables that I really like to buy. And mainly, I mean, as a general rule, if something comes, uh, oh, my glasses fell off. If something comes in a cover, like, you know, oranges, bananas, if they have a peel and you're not going to eat them, straight or eat their skin, I think it's okay to buy regular. But if you're going to consume those things straight and you're going to consume the skin, like it's the case of strawberries and tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, uh, kale, lettuces, uh, celery, I think it is worth uh, paying a little bit extra. So just keep that in mind. Bananas, papayas, um, those things you don't, you know, probably you don't need to do the extra expense, but, you know, peaches, maybe apples, those things I probably will try to in as much as I can. So we have here and then we can go now and it's finally diced. Some people use dice, uh, finally dice and, uh, or brunois, which is the French word, and means interchangeable. I don't know why, because for me, means is something that is kind of like smashed almost. Very, 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 very small. So here, we still see onion here. And we're going to also chop a lot of garlic because we need to flavor that uh, that marinara sauce. So I'm going to turn on the stove and put some olive oil, a little bit. And I'm going to move my camera so you guys can see my pan. Let me just put the onions there. <laughs> You're gonna see, can you see the, yes, you can see now the, and very little oil. We're gonna let this get some flavor. We're gonna add also garlic. I'm gonna chop garlic here. So you can see both maybe, yes. I'm gonna move. And going back to the seventies, there are so many iconic dishes on, during the 70s. And one that really caught my attention when I was doing the, my research is a funny salad called Watergate salad. Imagine that. Taking a political situation and changing it into a dish. That is some sense of humor, I think. So that Watergate salad is actually a dessert made with um, pistachio pudding, whipped cream, marshmallows, pineapple again, and some pecans. 
So there you have it. And we have all, all these uh, French dishes, thanks to the 10th season of Julia Child and the French art of cooking. And we have all the fondues and quiche and uh, crepe sucette and both bourguignon and all those yummy, 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 yummy dishes. And I think uh, some, of, some of those dishes are coming back, I guess. Some of those people miss. I don't think I miss the, the canned stuff, you know. I don't miss the instant pudding. But I guess sometimes it's fun to try some of these things. Is there any dish from the 70s that you guys remember or that your parents used to make that you want to share with me? Oh, Elvira is there. Great, Dubraska's Delights. Well, that is my, uh, my catering business. Thank you. Okay, let me see. Can you guys, are you guys seeing the, the, the stove now? Bert, uh, Brett says he loves kebabs. Oh, that is awesome. And you know, the thing is what I, I was saying at the beginning, I love them in different ways. Each cuisine almost has its own uh, version. In Mexico, kebabs are called alambres. In Venezuela, kebabs are called pinchos. So we do have pinchos. And it's the same thing. Pieces of meat and a skewer. So kebab is more like a, a you know, it's the, the Middle Eastern uh, name. And if it is chicken in Arabic, it's called shishtawu. Mm -hmm. And if it is a uh, lamb, it's called shish kebab. So actually, the word shish kebab is for lamb. For chicken, it's a completely different uh, name. It's actually shish kebab. Uh, let's say, what else? Pin, I say, how fun, okay. So do you guys garden, some of you, in order to get your, your vegetables? I'm gonna get my, my herbs. These are from my garden. Look how pretty they are. And here I have all kind of things. I have um, basil and I have some uh, Thai basil and I have oregano and mint and all kind of fun, delicious things. And I'm gonna move the camera now to this side, maybe. Look how much garlic we have. There is never enough garlic, and garlic is fabulous. Garlic and onions have this antiviral and antimicrobial uh, properties. They have allicin in them. So all the phytochemicals that fruits and vegetables have really improve our life. Here in Common Threads, we said that, you know, everything that comes inside your body, it makes a difference. So we should try to, to put as many vegetables and fruits in our daily uh, diet. You know, maybe add one more vegetable to our repertoire, or not being afraid when we go to the grocery store to pick something new that we don't know and just give it a try. We might be surprised what comes out of it, you know? Someone says, we love to garden. Oh, great. Always growing funny things like purple carrots. Oh my goodness. And white green beans. I have seen those white green beans. Those are like the flat ones. I love those. Purple carrots are so good. And you know that purple uh, fruits and vegetables are fabulous. They have a lot of antioxidants. And 
they are a great for uh, cell repair man. So I'm gonna put this on my stove and you can see here, this is, I hope you could have a smell of vision and get here some of this goodness. Can you guys see now? Uh-huh, that's what's going on in there. And I'm gonna grab my wooden spoon and there is almost very, no oil whatsoever, very little. We're not, uh, okay, I'm gonna lower this so you guys can see my face because I think it's, this has been <laughs> covering me for the whole, uh, but look, this is very good. And we're gonna work on our sudos and I'm gonna show you two different uh, little, uh, machines that can do the same job and they're not very expensive so you know it's good to maybe invest on one of those so we're gonna let this here get some flavor get some love and we're gonna I'm gonna do this and oh, oh my phone went kaboom okay let's put it back in here we are live that's what happens this is not recorded mm -mm. So we have this here, and I'm going to show you the two different machines that you guys can use. Maybe uh, we can turn off now the camera of the stove. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm going to show you here. Yeah. You see? We have this one, which, I mean, I got from Amazon for almost, I think it was like 14, 15 bucks. And then I got this one because when I was in culinary school, I wasn't going to carry all of this, although the school had one, but always people wanted to do use it. So I always carry this one. Look at this. Very easy to use. And does the same job. We're going to cut. And I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm going to use the, the thickest part. Look. Not difficult, huh? Fun. So, it's almost like using a, <laughs> a pencil sharpener. That's what I, I thought when I started using them. And look, if you go to the grocery store, and you don't find, uh, you don't find uh, zucchini, but you find squash, like happened to me today. This was really, really cheap. And these ones actually are organic. And I found them on sale because probably they wanted to get rid of them at my local grocery store. So... I bought them and we're going to make them with both to have more flavor. So just see how it looks like. I'm going to go. The good thing about this one is that it is so fast. Then you can do this in no time. The other one, well, you have to use some muscle on it. <laughs> but yeah, extra exercise for your muscle. And then is the recipe there. So we're going to use two of those and as you can see we are we're having here the the garlic already and i'm almost done and that's it i already went ahead and had these ones and this you have yellow here and some green here some yellow squash and by the way do not throw away anything you know me we don't throw away anything in this house this will be used either in an omelet or as a soup base or something else but we do not throw away things okay we do not throw away anything so i'm gonna move my machine to the side put these ones here and go back to my pot where I have the onion and the garlic 
gaining some love. We can now turn on the camera on the stove, if it's possible. Yes. Is it? Okay. There you go. I'm going to add the tomato paste, which the recipe calls for about two tablespoons. And I'm going to add that. Mmm. This has a fantastic flavor. And again, you know, we're going to add to it some pepper flakes because, well, pepper flakes and some spices make things better. And you go there, you know, according to your taste. You, you know, if you don't like it too spicy, you add a little. If you like it very spicy, you add more. And we're going to add that can of diced tomatoes. And, you know, I like to use the small diced ones. Uh, I like very small ones. They look prettier too. And they, like I said, anything small will retain, will have a different flavor than when you chop things very big. So for now, we're going to let these babies get flavorful here. We can uh, later at the end, we will add basil. So I'm gonna, you know, it's already washed and it's here. We can roughly chop it. We can add a little bit of black pepper. A little pinch of salt. Remember, I bought the tomatoes and the tomato paste that is has no salt added. So we are trying to be cautious with the intake of sodium. We can always add a little bit later. And we also have a little bit of Parmesan cheese that uh, will give us very good flavor at the end and a little bit of creaminess and richness to this dish. If it gets too viscous, uh, we can always add a little bit of water. I'm gonna take this my cutting board, I'm going to give it a little clean up and we're going to start making those skewers, you know, putting them together so we can bake them and we're almost done. Wash again. Remember sanitation always. Cleaning. Remember, we haven't put any meat in this cutting board, only vegetables. I'm going to bring a new cutting board. So we can work now our kebabs. And one tip that I want to give you, if you're going to grill them outside or even in the oven, make sure that you soak those skewers in water. It avoids burning and uh, keeps them intact. And they will look also prettier when you play them. You don't want them to look all like carbon, you know, like coal, charcoal. I'm going to get the chicken out of the refrigerator. And here is our chicken. No. This looks fabulous. And you can use uh let me move these things out of the way, maybe pass it. Okay, here. Can we now use this side of the, the camera, if it's possible? This is a real house. It's not a studio. It's my home. So my kids, my dog, everyone is coming in and out. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some little ones for plating because little kebabs look much prettier than these big guru ones. Big guru ones are maybe nice to serve them uh, by themselves, but since we're gonna play them all together with the sudos, I would like to have them uh, 
some small ones and some big ones. So we'll have them. Can we show the other camera, please? The There you go. Perfect. I love it. So you have here all the ingredients, the chicken that's been marinating for a while, the pineapple, bell peppers in multiple colors because, you know, the more colors, the better, more nutritional value. And then, like I said, I had these skewers. They have been soaking in water for over an hour. We don't want them to burn in the oven. So let's make some tiny bitty ones so they look really cute. I'm going to start with some chicken and look what I do with my protein. Let me move this so you guys get a better view. There you go. So look what I do. I kind of thread the chicken. Why? Well, it cooks faster and it just, it looks better. We're gonna put a piece of red pineapple. onion, green bell pepper, one more piece of chicken. Let's get a small one so we can fit it here. And a final piece of pineapple. Isn't it cute? What do you think? Ah, huh? ah, okay. So we're going to make another one and we're going to repeat and we're going to make them as even as possible. We want consistency when we cook. It's very important. So now again, we're going to thread and we're going to put a red one, a piece of pineapple, a piece of onion because it looks prettier and nicer and tastier one piece of chicken and a last piece of pineapple we have another one and we keep doing this and let's go back to our grocery shopping um and not letting ourselves be cut up into the sale and all the marketing strategies, you know, when you go to the grocery store and they have this big tower of things and they tell you that they're on sale or, oh, by the way, they already started at the grocery store doing uh, uh, degustation. So they have people there serving again little bits of food that had stopped during the pandemic. So I guess... Um, if you like to, to go and taste, that's one of the things they... They get you with that too, because you go in there and, and they let you try these things and then you cannot walk away from the thing. So maybe not a good idea. Some onion now again. More bell pepper. More chicken. Another thing is when they say buy three for four dollars. Well, you don't need to buy the three to get the discount. Even if you buy only one, you will get the prorated price. So it's good that we know all of those things. And being able to read the labels is so, so very important. You know, that we know what we're buying, that we know what we're eating, that we know that when we're buying something, that it is a whole grain, that, you know, that we know the amount of fat, the amount of... Uh, sugars uh, sometimes I'm, I'm i'm oh i forgot to put the onion i'm amazed at, at the things that we sometimes are consuming uh my husband tried to be very healthy today and he bought some some uh breakfast sausages that are plant-based and when i read the ingredients i almost flipped out I'm not going to mention any brands or anything because that's not the idea. But he had some trans fat acids, 
oils in it. And I was like, I'd rather eat something maybe out of Turkey. And I, I tried one and it gave me a stomach ache on top of that. So mm -mm. that was for me. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so be very careful with what you buy, you know. Be careful with the sales. And let me see. Now we have... We have now onion, that's the, oh no. Pineapple, onion, bell pepper. And one pineapple at the end. We have already about five of those. I think I'm gonna make big ones because big ones, it will go really, really fast. We have here our sauce cooking on the other side. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, water because I don't want it to, to dry up this, our marinara sauce and let it gain some flavor. You can see it there. Uh-huh. It's getting some love in there. And over here, well, we have our kebabs. So, Let's repeat the same process, but faster, because we have now longer kebab, uh, not longer skewers. We're gonna put red, pineapple, onion, Green bell pepper. Let's see if we can get this better. Okay, I think it's here, it's okay. Bell pepper. And then now let's go again and we'll repeat this so on. Yes. And a whole of my uh, audience was born also in the 1970s, or is it only me, the only old lady here? Like the only old lady, the only lady to be 50 today. Okay. Anybody cares to share? Age? No? Ah, nobody wants to share the age. Okay. Oh, golly, let me see what's going on with my phone. Okay, let's put more bell peppers, more chicken. You know, and these little ones, if you put three on a plate, is the perfect portion. You don't need to have more. And let's put one more green. And that's it. Now I'm going to follow the same pattern with the next one. This smells so delicious, all the cumin and all the... Okay, I think there are two pieces here of chicken, yes. And maybe one more piece. These are very tiny pieces. Bread. And we'll talk a little bit more. Okay, we have six... Oh, Susan said, how about 76 years old? That's perfect. That's my mom's age. And my mom is in pretty good health. So 76 years old and being in good health, I think is a good thing. You know, if we're getting older, it means that we are living and living is good. So I am glad to hear that, you know, we have people on the audience that are 70 And we have here, okay, this, more pineapple, more chicken, and 
And because our time is short, I'm gonna leave it here. I can finish this up later for my family, but we're gonna stick this in the oven really, really quick. This is not gonna take a long time at all. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator, but I want you guys to see how all of this looks like. So look at this. This is how it looks like. You can see it. I'm gonna put them in the oven, wash my hands, obviously, and come back and talk a little bit more about the 70s. This is gonna be ready in no time, and you're gonna see me making those noodles too. Take this out. And I'm back here again. I'm going to show you guys how this sauce is coming along and bring also some parmesan cheese because we need that so let's see we have this beautiful sauce simmering color is looking much better and once we add the pseudos in there, they're gonna also throw uh, some water. At the end of the day, we know that it's not, uh, it's not a, a wheat pasta or a grain pasta. It's a, it's a vegetable and it will, instead of absorbing water, it's gonna actually lend some water. It's gonna percolate some water. So this is looking very good. I'm gonna grab some basil from my garden. I like this sweet Italian basil. And I also have here some fresh oregano. And just roughly chop it. No, even with our hands, we can tear the little pieces and it will look very rustic, very beautiful, uh, super nice. I like to leave some of those small things as decoration, but nothing, nothing else. We, we can add some of those things. This is all full of flavor. And now because it's getting extremely hot, my basil is getting to be yellow because it gets burned by the sun too. It's kind of hard to keep it now. Hopefully it will last through the summer. Yes. So let's see. maybe I'll use the knife after all. Let's put it here. A few oregano. Those I'm gonna put in the sauce. Just like that. Because it has more flavor that way. I'm not gonna do anything to it. Remember when you use fresh herbs you use more quantity. The flavors are not as pronounced or as strong. When you use uh, uh, dry herbs, uh, the flavor is not the same and you need to use less. The flavor is a lot more concentrated. It's the same as when we talk about dry fruits and, and fresh fruits. You know, dry fruits uh, are about a quarter of the size of the or less of the fresh one, quarter of the amount of maybe uh, water, concentration of water, but the concentration of sugar is uh, com which is a lot more. Okay, now we're gonna give those kebabs maybe 10 minutes at the most. 
And yeah, we can do them pretty like any chef will do, put it together like this so we can get a chief on it. Uh, let's move the camera. We can do this and create a little roll and make very thin chiffonette, which is French for this. And just rock in motion, remember. Look how nice and thin. Yes, we can do that. Or like, like I said before, we can just uh, chop them roughly with the hand and that will be also fabulous. And we can just throw them here. Look how beautiful this is looking. But, you know, since it's a family meal, we're not going to make chiffonette anymore. We're going to just roughly chop them, okay, and have fun with it too. There you go. Oh, much better. So from the 70s, what else? From the 70s, what else? Oh. I think my phone has been, I need to mute it. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh. There is an echo here. I hope you guys cannot hear it. Okay, my my laptop is okay. But the phone needs to be uh, muted. So here we are left. We're going to put some of this inside the sauce. And then at the end, we'll add some more. I'm gonna give the taste to this sauce to make sure that the amounts of salt are correct. Remember, once we add the, the once we add the sodas, it's gonna have more water and it's gonna get diluted. So, mm. flavor is good. I'm gonna put also some of these tomatoes because it looks pretty and it gives another texture and for me cooking is all about flavor texture temperatures i need to mute the phone this is uh, echo in here hmm. Well, from the 70s, we have not only disco or the, the end of Vietnam War, but also the relationships with China started to open with Nixon's visit to China. Uh, we also know that in that decade at the end, we had the big issue in Iran, um, our embassy got taken hostage uh, we have uh, the supreme court ruling on legalizing abortion that is still very controversial now so a lot of a lot of different Things happen in that decade. I have to say, very interesting. I need my phone to be uh, muted. This is very difficult. Okay. I don't know how to do it. Microphone. Are you on two zooms? Yeah. Okay. I think it's now okay. Okay, look at this beautiful. Now it's looking great. I'm gonna go and check on the chicken. 
because once I put this in here, it takes no time whatsoever. Oh, that's looking beautiful. I will say three more minutes or four and we're done. I'm gonna put on the side these bay leaves, get my surface clean, bring some plates so we can clean this. And maybe talk a little bit more about the, the 70s. What else do you remember? Uh, I think it's probably the volume here, maybe. I don't know. Been having some technical issues today, I guess. Okay. Maybe it's good to have that music. Yes. The music of the 70s. I love it. Love it. So many good artists came out from that time so many great songs any song that you guys remember peace not war i love that one and i think it's still valid today peace and no war we don't want war we want peace we all can dream eh? that song of the beatles i really like it I think that one's from the 60s, not from the 70s. Oh, Fleetwood Mac. Yes. Okay. Look, we're going to add some of those pseudos. I'm going to add a little bit of salt because, well, it needs it. It was very unsalted. I didn't add much at the beginning. And now once we add the, the pseudos, it's going to even, it's going to be even less. So that's it. That should do it. So I'm going to add little by little and kind of toss them around. because this goes really, really fast. And let's go. Look at this. I'm gonna move my camera. Hey, there you go. And like I do with any spaghetti, by the way, I'd rather add a little drizzle of olive oil at the end. Why? Because it just gives so much flavor at the end. It doesn't oxidize and it just, it makes it better. So this is it. This is how it's done. That chicken is going to come out anytime now. Look at the beautiful colors here between the green and the yellow. Green from the zucchini and yellow from the yellow squash because we had them both today. Different nutrients, you know, chlorophyll, some carotenoids and the yellow stuff. And that's it. No more. We don't want to kill this. That's how it is. Add a little bit, like I said, a little drizzle of olive oil. That's it. Just a touch. Nothing else. I'm going to plate this. I'm going to get some Parmesan cheese and those uh, skewers, those kebabs, the chicken spice kebabs. So good. They look crispy. By the way, if you don't like, uh, Parmesan, you can always use a little bit of mozzarella or 
whatever you find uh, more appetizing for you. And these are only ideas, like I said. And I told you earlier too that if you don't want this Italian profile in your pseudos, maybe you can do them Asian with a little bit of a, a soy sauce and ginger. That would be fabulous too. So I have here some fresh shredded uh, Parmesan. I'm gonna go ahead and do my thing here with the, like this, cause well, it's easier. We just make a little, maybe cut them with the scissor cause they're all going together. And let me show you, how am I gonna plate it? Look how beautiful it is. Just go down, 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 down to keep the shape. Aha, uh -huh. plating like in any fancy Italian restaurant, okay? Some of that beautiful sauce on top. Some of those tomatoes in there. Some of the sauce. Always clean. If something doesn't look right. Mmm, doesn't it look appetizing? I think so. And let's get another plate here. And again, look how I do it. So you guys know we go all around. And if that thing doesn't end, we have to cut it. Let's make sure that the plate is clean. We help ourselves with this tool. And that's it. Some sauce. So it looks like a pro. We can Add a little basil like that, so it looks really pretty. And we're waiting on our kebabs for sure. Let's see, this one is bigger. There you go. Some Parmesan. Look how beautiful that is now. We're adding some Parmesan here. Very little goes a long way because it's good Parmesan. You know, if you use the, the the commercial brand, well, you might need probably a little bit more. But here, this is how it looks like. Let me get those kebabs from the oven. And I can tell you they are fully, fully cooked. Can we see? Hey. Important thing when you're roasting things in the oven is do not crowd your baking tray. Do not crowd your baking tray. I cannot say that enough because then you will be boiling things and they don't look very pretty. So I'm going to put three on the small one here. I guess two is enough. Otherwise it looks like too much. 
You can see here again, I'm gonna show how it looks like. This looks divine. And now, and now, now, now comes the best, best part of them all, which is for me, trying. And for you guys, the saddest part of them all, because for you guys, it is just watching. So, I'm gonna go and give this baby a try. I'm gonna keep this one so you guys can see it because it's so pretty. But for me, I'm gonna take this one, this plate, and I'm gonna. Mmm, 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 mmm. 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 Chicken is cooked through. It is crispy outside, as you can see. You have all this caramelization. It's juicy inside. It's not salty. It is super tender. The pineapple is lends a sweet flavor without being overly so. Let's go now and try our noodles too, our sudos. They look so fabulous here, by the way. So wonderful. Mm. I'm going to have to probably use a knife here because this is so long and they refuse to give. Mm -hmm. So let's try. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I made a mess here, I think. These noodles are long. Okay, it looks like I I was able to make it. Mmm, mmm. It's delicious, 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 delicious. It is so yummy. It is still crispy. They still have, they're not dead. They still have bite to it. And that's what we want. We want our vegetables not to be overcooked. We want them to retain some of that fabulous nutritional value. We want to, uh, you know, experience the flavor of the food, not the flavor of fat or any other additives. It's okay to add some spices, but it's, it's very good to, to learn to taste food. I want to thank you guys all for the opportunity you gave me today to join you guys and to look silly like I look today on my 70s clothes, um, to talk a little bit about the decade and the, the dishes, the meals that were eaten during that decade. Uh, remember that at the end of this broadcast, there is uh, a survey that you can uh, that you can fill out. If you have any any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. You know that I'm on social media, but also you can reach to commonthreads.org or if you want more recipes, Common Bites uh, is your place to go. Until next month, what we we'll be doing another session of cooking through the decades. I will say goodbye to you all. Love to you all. Keep cooking, keep sharing food with family because that's the common thread that binds us all. Love, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Debraska. Those zoodles looked really good. So thank you to all of you for being with us tonight. Again, in an effort to better understand the community they're serving, Common Threads does have a quick survey that should take less than one minute to complete. The link is in the chat, so please take the time and fill out this quick survey for them. Also, please follow them on social media for future events. And once again, please visit our website at hcpl.net to learn about all of our upcoming programs and services. Have a good night.